NASA have said that they've found powerful geothermal features underneath Antarctica. Instead, this could help them to explain some of the strange activity that's been recorded in the region. Experts involved in the study said that measurements taken underneath Marie Birdland revealed that the area is as hot as the supervolcano in Yellowstone National Park, and this is causing ice to melt beneath the surface, leading to the creation of lakes and rivers. Interestingly, a researcher at the University of Colorado, Denver, suggested that an anomaly is lurking underneath Antarctica, but at the time there was not enough proof to back up these claims. Now, scientists have said that recent seismic images have confirmed geothermal activities. NASA have even spoken out about this and said they support this idea, saying the following. A geothermal heat source called a mantle plume lies deep below Antarctica's Marie Birdland, explaining some of the melting that creates lakes and rivers under the ice sheet. End quote. According to NASA, though, this isn't anything new and that these geothermal features have to be studied more, noting that recent activity around that area shows that ice collapses are happening due to the area heating up. Researchers have also said that they were surprised when they discovered that there were over 100 dormant volcanoes below the continent, which makes it the largest volcanic region in the world. The team said this discovery is important for science, because it not only helps us understand where certain things are playing out in Antarctica, but says that these geothermal features could have implications on the rest of the planet. If one of these were to erupt, it could further destabilize some of the region's ice sheets, with scientists saying that much of this area is already weakened due to global warming. Dr. Robert Bingham from Edinburgh University said the following, it's fascinating to uncover an extensive range of volcanoes in this relatively unexplored continent. Better understanding of volcanic activity could shed light on the impact on Antarctica's ice in the past, present and future, and on other rift systems around the world. If the ice sheets are reduced significantly, this could release pressure on the volcanoes that lie below, and lead to eruptions that could further destabilize the ice sheets and enhance sea level rises that are already affecting our oceans." End quote. NASA continued with the following on their website. A new NASA study adds evidence that a geothermal heat source called a mantle plume lies deep below Antarctica's Marie Birdland, explaining some of the melting that creates lakes and rivers under the ice sheet. Although the heat source isn't new, it may help explain why the ice sheet collapsed rapidly in an early era of rapid climate change, and why it's so unstable today. The stability of an ice sheet is closely related to how much water lubricates it from below, allowing glaciers to slide more easily. Understanding the sources and future of the melt water under West Antarctica is important for estimating the rate at which ice may be lost to the oceans in the future. Antarctica's bedrock is laced with rivers and lakes, the largest of which is the size of Lake Erie. Many lakes fill and drain rapidly, forcing the ice surface thousands of feet above them to rise and fall by as much as 20 feet, or 6 meters. The motion allows scientists to estimate where and how much water must exist at the base. Some 30 years ago, a scientist at the University of Colorado Denver suggested that heat from a mantle plume under Marie Birdland might explain regional volcanic activity in a topography dome feature. Very recent seismic imaging has supported this concept. End quote. One of NASA's most recent comments is that their seismic imaging has revealed that there may be a rift, or a fracture in the Earth's crust. They've said that they will be monitoring these changes. In fact, just recently in July of 2019, scientists saw the uncovering of a lava lake on the remote Saunders Island, and despite there being approximately 1,500 volcanoes on Earth, Mount Michael on Saunders Islands is only the eighth in the world to be confirmed as having a lava lake. The discovery of the volcano was reported in the journal, Volcanology and Geothermal Research. 
This was the first volcano with a lava lake to have been identified in the remote series of South Sandwich Islands. This finding was made using satellite imagery. In 2001, low resolution satellite data proved to have an anonymous result in it, but the low resolution and limited data frame could not prove that there was a lava lake on Saunders Island. With more advanced technology capturing shots more frequently, and at a higher resolution, images collected between 2003 and 2018 have uncovered the lava lakes, spanning 90 to 250 meters in diameter, with the lava hitting the scoring temperatures of 1,279 degrees Celsius. After the eruption within a matter of days or weeks, this liquid lava pool would dry into solid rock, this geological discovery is made all the more exciting by the inaccessible nature of Saunders Island. Very few researchers have visited this volcano, and none have ever reached the summit. Mount Michael is a fascinating, thrilling discovery, and without the high-resolution, high-quality satellite imagery, we perhaps never would have uncovered the world's eighth lava lake. Dr. Alex Burton Johnson from the British Antarctic Survey commented the following. We are delighted to have discovered such a remarkable geological feature in the British Overseas Territory. He elaborated explaining that the increased understanding of the volcanic activity within Mount Michael had the potential to tell us about similar features elsewhere. Additionally, the discovery of Mount Michael proves were able to monitor volcanoes from space. The development of space technology is incredible, and it's helped us unravel many mysteries. Space Force is a space service branch of the US Armed Forces, and as of right now has over 6,000 military personnel, and over 70 spaceships. According to the Space Force's official website, They've said that the US Space Force is a military service that organizes, trains, and equips Space Forces in order to protect US and allied interests in space, and to provide space capabilities to the Joint Force. The United States Space Force's responsibilities will include developing Guardians, acquiring military space systems, maturing the military doctrine for space power, and organizing Space Forces to present our combatant commands. Just recently, a United States Space Force officer, Lieutenant General Chance Salzman, who is the Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Operations Cyber and Nuclear, said that the US had made a worrying discovery, going on to detail that China has a new hypersonic weapon system. General Chance then detailed that this craft has the ability to stay in space for a long period of time, going on to describe it as an orbital device. Operating systems within the United States are said to have detected this craft, with HYPE officials in the United States military detailing that at this time this hypersonic aircraft was in its testing phase, and that during one of these missions the US detected that it had fired a missile that exceeded the speed of sound. General Chance said the following, This is a categorically different system because a fractional orbit is different from suborbital. A fractional orbit means it can stay in orbit as long as the user determines, and then it deorbits it as part of its flight path. US officials have detailed that the fractional orbital system allows crafts to go into low Earth orbit, where it can then stay before it's told to deorbit for an attack. The main advantage of this is that the orbital flight path would not reveal the target's location, meaning that a surprise attack could be made without the target knowing. US intelligence has said it's likely that this new hypersonic craft has done a number of revolutions around the world, and has passed its testing stage. General Chance said this craft has the ability to spend a prolonged amount of time in space. Interestingly, retired Air Force General John Hyten also went on to detail this hypersonic aircraft, saying the following, It went around the world dropped off a hypersonic glide aircraft that glided all the way back to China, that then impacted a target in China. 
Not surprisingly, China's foreign minister denied these statements, saying that the alleged craft was actually just a missile. The official transcript reads as follows: As we understand, this was a routine test of a space vehicle to verify technology of spacecraft reusability. After separating from the space vehicle before its return, the supporting devices will burn up when it's falling into the atmosphere, and the debris will fall into the high seas. It's not a missile, but a space vehicle. Interestingly, Chinese officials did not go into detail about how it got there in the first place, but U.S. intelligence has said they think that China is testing this new range of hypersonic aircrafts. As of right now, U.S. officials have said they're trying to track these objects as best they can. Just recently, the U.S. Air Force said that real-life force fields were on the horizon. According to the U.S. Air Force, force fields could become a reality in a future that's not so far, far away. An announcement from the Air Force Research Lab released a report in the early summer of 2021. That made the suggestion that force fields is within our reach. We seem to be about to cross the threshold between our current weaponry and warfare tactics into the strange and somewhat frightening futuristic weapons we have, which up until now we've only been able to imagine. Of course, the mention of a force field was not the only aspect of the Air Force report worth discussing. Plenty of other updates and suggestions came along with this announcement. Or discussing how the military industry complex plans on making the most out of direct energy weapons. The report presented the claim that the force field technology could be merely decades, if not years, away from becoming a reality, and that as of right now we're at a quote tipping point in the development of weaponry, balancing the huge advancements that we see that are just around the corner. But with them out of reach enough that we can continue to develop the less revolutionary equipments that we already have in use, the potential force fields that we may be able to create sometime soon have been described as umbrella-like. Its purpose would, unsurprisingly, be to deflect missile attacks, localizing several directed energy weapons. In the initial phases. These weapons to make the force fields will be aided by vehicles that we mounted to, though in the long term, after more success and as the force field research develops, it's hoped that they can be lifted into space, where a laser can attack within a set radius. The report stated the following: By 2060, a sufficiently large fleet or constellation of high-altitude systems could provide a missile defense umbrella. As part of a layer defense system, if such concepts prove affordable and necessary, this technology would certainly mark an impressive scientific turn. Though, like any new research, cost could leave the concept with a question mark. While many in the department and the field hope for this technology to come about in some form or another by 2060, we do not know how quickly these developments can take place between then and now. So predictions are currently little more than excited speculations and shocking new concepts. The current progress shows that there's a number of energy-directed weapons already under construction. It was announced back in 2021 that the U.S. Army is developing what they have dubbed the world's most powerful laser. This laser should be able to use various pulses and signals to interfere with enemy signals, and quote vaporize targets. This laser has the catchy name of the tactical ultra-short pulse laser for army platforms. The hope is that this overwhelming piece of equipment will be one million times more powerful than existing and therefore rival laser platforms. So, what do you guys make of these recent announcements? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.